What is going on, you scalers? Today, I'm gonna be walking through 10 unique zaps or automations that we use inside of our eight-figure company for massive growth. You probably have not even heard or seen any of these automations before, and yet we have used them inside of our company to make more money in less time with less employees. So if you are a business owner or you are starting your business and you're looking, how can I grow my business the most effective way possible, this video will be for you. As usual, if you stay around to the end, I'm going to walk you through how you can get your hands on all of these automations in just two clicks so you can put them inside of your business today. Finally, just two quick words of warning. This is not a beginner Zapier video. If you want to see a beginner Zapier video, I have one. I'll link in the description down below that has tens of thousands of views that goes through much more in depth exactly what Zapier is and why automations are important inside of your company. And number two, I have a 44 person team and our business is literally helping other companies grow through systems and automations and team members. So don't look at all these and try to install all 10 of them today because you probably don't even need some of them. And so just find one or two that you actually need and implement inside your business and watch your company grow. So just to give you an example of how much we use these automations inside of our company, this is just in the last seven days, we've had almost 50,000 tasks that were automated in the last seven days, over 260 different zaps. So this is how important I think automations can be for the growth of your company. And with that being said, let's dive right in. So number one is actually going to be a combination between our sales CRM and our paid advertising uh, campaigns. So this is actually whenever there is a new demo scheduled inside of our CRM close.io, what we will do is actually send that email and that lead information back to Facebook. Now, this is important for two main reasons. Number one, we're always running retargeting campaigns inside Facebook. So it's good to create custom audiences that we can run retargeting campaigns to. For example, if you've ever been to any of my websites, you probably have seen my ads online and you're probably like, oh my God, just stop following all around the internet. And all I have to say to you is just buy my stuff and I, I will stop. But, um, it's important that you have these retargeting campaigns and it's important that you're always updating them. That way, whenever someone books an appointment, we can show specific ads to them, such as client testimonials, or maybe a podcast that I've done, or maybe I can give them access to a PDF or a case study. So a lot of our retargeting campaigns are five to $10 a day, and we run all of them to people that have booked calls with us. So they're more likely to actually become a customer. And the second reason why this is important is because we create what is known as a lookalike audiences on Facebook. And this is where you pretty much tell Facebook, Hey, here's this list of people right here that I'm uploading to you. Go find me another list of a million people that are almost exactly like this original list. So if you were trying to generate booked appointments on Facebook, imagine if you could tell Facebook, Hey, Facebook, here are all the people that have booked an appointment with me currently to date, go find me a million more people that are just as likely to book an appointment with me. And that's exactly what look like audiences are. And so on on here, what we do is we're always updating our lookalike audience on Facebook through this zap automation here, which means that that um, that audience, the lookalike on Facebook is always getting better and better and finding more quality people in order to send over to Facebook. So pretty much when an opportunity is created and closed, so whenever somebody becomes a booked call inside of close IO, we always delay it by like three to five minutes, just because we notice that um, if we do it right away, it typically won't find the lead when we when we do it right away. And then we'll find the lead and close. So um, we look up the leads uh, email address through this step here. We only continue if they are one of our certain products. So, you know, we don't want to send, we have two different products inside of our company. We don't want to send one booked appointments to this product's uh, custom audience and look like pixel. Cause then we'd be retargeting the wrong data and same way, vice versa. So hopefully you're still with me. I know that might be a little bit advanced for some people here, but this one is how we get new appointments from close IO inside of Facebook audience audiences so we can retarget and create new uh, look like audiences to target cold people. All right, our second automation here is something I like to call the sales call recording automation. And this was created a few months ago because as we were scaling, I think we're around 12 or 13 sales reps at this time, it was becoming increasingly difficult for our sales team leader, the person who manages the whole sales team to find and listen to the sales call recordings that our sales team was having, which is what all great sales team leaders should be doing. So once again, because he was finding it difficult to do it manually, we looked up the solution of how to do it through automation 
automation. And that's exactly what we built here. So now what this is, is that whenever we have a new deals closed message, you can see that at the top here, which actually means that whenever uh, one of our team members close the deal, they submit a form and it shows up in a Slack message. Then what we will actually do is, is there's a little bit of custom code involved in this. And don't worry, like I said, you're going to get access to this at the end. Um, and then we'll find the message, the original appointment, uh, the email that was used to book that appointment inside of that Slack message. And then we're going to go find their sales call recording. And then we can send these directly to our sales team leader in a totally separate Slack channel. So imagine if you're a CEO or you are a sales team leader and every single day you wake up and all you have to do is go inside of a Slack channel and it's just called closed deal recordings. And you can just listen to all of the closed deals that happened the day before. You're just like, click, 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 click. How much more efficient would that be for the use of your time? And here's a little bonus tip as well. Our client success team, they use this exact same automation because what we've noticed is that we are obsessed with client success inside of our company scaling with systems. And what you want to be very wary of is what I call the handoff. And the handoff is the time between the sales call and the client success actually delivering the fulfillment. And what most companies do is most companies treat it like a call center when you call Geico or Apple or Amazon, where you call them and you talk to somebody for 20 minutes and then they go, oh, I need to patch you to another department. They patch you to the department and then the person goes, how can I help you today? They have no pre-contact of what you talked about, what you said, you know, uh, no idea of who you are, what you're looking for. And you have to go through that whole process again. And so we strive to never do that inside of our team. We want to have as smooth of a handoff as possible between sales and fulfillment. And so also whenever a salesperson closes the deal, well, we're going to have to have a one-on-one -on -one client success manager be working with that person to help grow their business. And so what the client success manager will do is they will also listen to this sales call recording. So imagine the first uh, conversation they have with the client and they say, Hey, Bob, I know that you were talking to Joe and you said that your biggest problems was X, Y, and Z on that call. I just want to confirm, is that the case? And it always blows our clients away. Our clients always say that, you know, our, our onboarding calls and our client success is the best they've ever experienced. And I am tuning my own horn a little bit here, but that's because we use automations just like this. For our next automation, we're going to stay on the theme of client success. And so this one is pretty cool. This one is inside of both of our companies. We have something that I call ring the bell. And this is whenever a client has a win, they share it inside of our private community and they say, ring the bell. I did this thing today. I closed a new client. I hit my first hundred thousand dollar month. I hit my first million dollar month. I, uh, you know, was able to leave my nine to five job, whatever they're saying, they say ring the bell. And this is really great social proof for us to be using in our marketing materials. And we have literally thousands of ring the bells from our clients. And so what I wanted to be able to do was I wanted to be able to start organizing the ring the bells in a searchable format. So that way, in case we had a prospect on the phone and they were saying, oh, well, have you ever helped this type of person before? Or have you ever done this thing before? We have a, a database, essentially a, a brain hive where we can type in those words and then we can pull out a specific ring the bell, a specific client win and show it to that client. So that was why I created this automation right here. So this is the new ring the bell uh, jot form submission, and we're going to send them to Google drive. So let me walk you through how this works. So the first thing is that what we used to do is we used to take screenshots and upload them straight to the Slack channel uh, and say, Hey, here's a client win. But the problem with that is there's no way you can uh, kind of search and filter by that because I don't have the software in order to read the text on a photo. So instead, what we did was I created a jot form that actually we would upload the photo to, and we would copy and paste the text of the photo in the jot form. This way we have both a searchable text format and we have the image format. And then that will be sent over to our Slack channel for ring the bells. And it does the same thing as before. It allows us to see the photos, but also it allows it to be searchable. And that's what this uh, process is here. And then the, the final step is that we actually upload the same photo inside of Google drive. So whenever my chief marketing officer or our marketing team is looking to create a new sales funnel, maybe a new ad, you know, maybe they're doing a new email campaign. We don't have to go back and forth. They don't have to find some social proof online. They can literally just go to this Google drive uh, folder that we have, and they can look in there and just see 
where which one of the thousands of client wins should I pull from today and write the email about? And that's essentially what happens here. Once again, a little bit of custom code. It's nothing. I, I, look, I am the most non techy Cody person you'll ever meet, but this stuff is super simple. And like I said, I'll show you at the end how you can get your hands on it. But new uh, jot form is submitted a little bit of custom code in order to clean up the jot form. We send the photo inside of Google Drive and then we send it in a searchable format inside of a Slack channel so that we can search inside of there next time we need to show a prospect a specific win. This next automation has to be one of the coolest ones that we've ever done. And this one was actually created by our chief marketing officer, Clemen. I always give credit where credit's due. This man is a madman. And what we were trying to do is figure out, okay, one of the biggest bottlenecks we have in this company in all transparency is we have so much social proof, so many client wins and case studies and testimonials. How do we get them and distribute them across all of my dozens of social media channels? And it was becoming a manual process. We have a 12 person creative team. I have a creative director. I'm going to get through some of the creative automations we have here in a moment, but it was becoming ridiculous because we get anywhere from three to 10 uh, client wins, ring the bells every single day, you know, every day of the the year we get those wins and so it was becoming difficult in order to share those wins it was literally starting to bottleneck so of course what did we think about we thought about how can we start automating the process and so this is what clement came up with so same jot form submission um, that we created previously so that i talked about in the last app and i promise this is the last step an automation we have that requires a little bit of code so don't worry but the same automation that we use in order to create the last app well then what happens is we only continue if the product that it's for is for one of our products like i said we have two different product lines so only if it's for one of our products so that way we're not mixing and matching then we run some very simple java code once again it's three lines of code it's super simple you'll get your hands on it and then this is where the very very magical thing happens what my chief marketing officer did is he created a Google sheet that has different variations of what is known as intro text. So an intro text is like the first one or two lines of a post or of an email or of a text message, right? It's the first two lines. And so what he did was he created, I think like eight to 10 different variations of the first line and the second line. So if there's 10 of the first line, there's 10 of the second line. Those are technically 20 different interchangeable variations. And so what we will do is we will look up a specific variation. It will randomly choose one of those two things together. And then we will actually go inside of our uh, Facebook group, our totally free Facebook group for one of our product lines where we're training, educating, and nurturing prospects. And it will literally post something from my profile in that Facebook group with one of those two variations. So let me give you an example. Someone posts a ring the bell that they just had their first $50,000 week, right? Well, the this will trigger. It will only continue if it was for our uh, one of our product lines known as Remote Integrator Academy. It cleans up the the um, text by using a little bit of JavaScript, and then it will look up the rows and find line one and line two together. So let's say the line one says, what's going on integrators? Uh, check this out below. That's line one. And the second line is, this is a recent client win that just came in today. So those are interchangeable. And then it comes in the actual text that we got from the ring the bell, which is the client saying, hey, I just had this amazing win. I just made my first $20,000 a week. And then we post the photo down below it. So pretty cool. Uh, and it, it seems like it's really like organic, like I'm posting it myself. But once again, this is all automation. All right, now we're on to automation number five. And like I promised, no more unique code. So this one is for our content creation team. A big shout out to them. They're the ones that are making this video and editing and publishing it for you right now. So so this one is actually whenever we have a new content creation form. So what was happening? Let me walk through the bottleneck. The bottleneck was we have 12 team members on the content creation team and we just had everybody on the team that ever needed something done to the video editors to the youtube researchers all this stuff they would just be sending the messages in slack it was just like crazy amount of messages in slack tagging people here and there and it wasn't very systemized so instead what we did was we created what i call the content creation request form and this is when you want something done so i'm actually going to use it when i'm done shooting this video uh, my marketing team does it whenever they're done creating an ad and they'll submit this form and this form will then go in a very organized and systemized process in order to be uh, uh, reviewed, edited, revised, and then published, right? And so we created a system around that so it wasn't just people tagging people in Slack anymore. And I just realized um, I use JotForm 
performs an unbelievable amount and i think that like probably 80 percent of these automations do have job form in it if you're still sticking along with this video here uh, and you want to learn a little bit more about job form maybe you want me to do a video on all the job forms that we use i think we have over 80 job forms in our company that we use daily just comment down below job form or just let me know that you guys do want to do it and i'll create another video around that but i am obsessed with it actually uh team if you guys can show some of the memes that our team was making fun of me by posting job form memes about how often i use job form on this video here that would be pretty funny uh so let's move on so this is uh whenever the request is submitted that triggers the zap and then we send a message inside the content creation uh channel and we say hey there's a new uh content creation request that needs to be done then we send another message below that, that puts in all the information like hey what uh, what's the editing rules what is the publishing rules what is the um uh, you know, what is the deadline? How important is it? And then the final thing that we'll do is we have a content creation calendar and a content creation kind of pipeline inside of Asana. And it will put all of the information inside of that content creation pipeline and calendar in order for it to be scheduled. So let's say I upload this video today. I want it to go out in two days. Whenever I select two, uh, two days from now, the date in the jot form, it will then create a new project to be done and it will show up two days from now inside of the um, inside of the Asana calendar. And this has allowed us to go from me by myself putting out, I think like eight YouTube videos a month and a few posts here and there to literally putting out well over 120 different content variations every single month with just a uh, 11 to 12 person team. Okay, automation number six is going to be for our NPS surveys. So if you don't know what NPS is, it's essentially what is known as net promoter score. And it's a great way to know how much people actually love your products. You may think that everybody loves your products, but in reality, unless you're collecting in a anonymous NPS score, you have no real way of knowing. And we put this in place, I think about eight months ago, and we have worked really hard to put the NPS score as high as humanly possible. And we're always looking to create our products and make them better, but we have made massive strides. Like I said, we're obsessed with client success. And so we've made massive strides to go us from what is known as neutral on the NPS score, where it's like, nobody's really uh, promoting you, but nobody's also saying that you're doing a bad job to having a uh, promoter, uh, 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 um, attractor a net promoter score, which means that people are literally telling their friends and family, you got to come work with these people at Scaling with Systems. They are amazing. So if you're not measuring it, if you're not getting feedback, then you have no real way of knowing yourself. So what we do is we submit a MPS survey out and I have a separate automation. I probably can't get into this one because it's, it's pretty complex, but we have separate automations that send out MPS surveys at different times and for different products. So for example, whenever somebody purchases a low ticket product from us, if they have completed the first three modules, the low ticket product, then we send the MPS survey. Or if it's been two days and they haven't logged in at all, then we also send an MPS survey. If they're part of our high ticket products and they're working with us on a one-on-one -on -one basis, we'll send it after like 45 days into working with us for us to also get their feedback as well. So that is, there's a bunch of automation set up for that. But this one right here is pretty cool because this is also our chief marketing officer, Clement came up with this idea. This is also so that whenever people are giving feedback on the MPS survey, he said, well, great. These people are giving their feedback. Even if they didn't maybe love the products, like one of our low ticket products, what if they still wanted to work with us one-on-one? -on -one? Cause we just assumed, Hey, if they didn't put a 10 and they absolutely loved it, they didn't want to work with us. But what the data was showing us was that even if someone put a nine or an eight, they still want to work with us. It just was that low ticket product may not have solved the exact problem that they wanted. And so what we did is if they submitted a jot form, uh, and let's say they provided their contact deals, we created what's known as a path inside of jot form, uh, which is saying, Hey, well, uh, if this happens, then there's multiple different variations. So this example is if they provided contact details and they weren't anonymous. And then the other one is if they didn't provide contact details and they were anonymous. And as you can see here, uh, there's like a few steps that happen. So if they provide the contact details, then it goes inside of our satisfaction survey Slack channel. It goes inside of our asset opt-in Slack channel. So our appointment centers can call them. And then it actually puts the information for them inside of close IO and updates them inside of active campaign. Same thing essentially that comes up if they don't provide the contact details it's just a lot simpler right so uh the path rules that come in here says hey if it if they don't have the email address then just notify our uh, client success team and so we can read it as a company as far as why this person maybe didn't give us um, a high score or why they did give us a high score all right so automation number
number seven. This one is pretty unique because I've never seen anybody else do this. And this was something that we kind of stumbled across in our feedback surveys that I was just talking about a moment ago. And what was happening is that inside of our uh, sales process, we have some serious curation, some serious, um, I should say disqualification for people that are trying to work with us because inside of both of our companies, we guarantee our results. And we want to make sure we have the best client satisfaction and success in the entire industry. I know that's the only way that we'll grow. And so in order to make sure that we have the best client satisfaction and success, it actually starts as early on as who you are getting on the phone with. Because if you're getting somebody on the phone who maybe has money, but is not a good fit for your company, then even if they pay you money, you might have to end up refunding them. They charge back, they complain. It's just not worth it. And so what we do, we've, we've created a very rigorous, what I call curation process, where once someone books an appointment with us, on average, we cancel around 80% of those appointments on our sales team's calendar. So we send them an email and we say, I have literally two people full-time that just review applications that come in. And we say, hey, based on everything that you're saying here, it seems that unfortunately you're not a good fit for X, Y, and Z reasons. And it's nothing against them. We just guarantee our results and we wanna make sure we have amazing client satisfaction. And so it starts with only working with the absolute best people that we know that we can help. And just as a side note, if you're having a hard time with close rate, show up rate, cash per close, all of that stuff, those are some of the things we help our clients with. Just try curating all of the bad people off your calendar and you might see all of those numbers shoot up. So what we started doing was when we would curate them, the problem that was happening was that they were still getting our marketing emails. So we would say, Hey, you're not a good fit. Sorry about that. Um, you know, this is the reason why you're not a good fit, but then all of our marketing automations that were trying to convince them to book a call would still be going like, Hey, why haven't you booked a call? Why haven't you booked a call? And so people were getting a little frustrated that on one hand, we cancel their appointment because they're a bad fit. And then on the other hand, the automations were still sending them appointments saying you should book a call to speak with us and see if you're a fit. So I created this automation here where um, if a lead matches these certain conditions inside of our CRM close IO, AKA, if they are curated by our sales team, then what we're gonna do is add a tag inside of active campaign, which I have a totally separate video on active campaign. We'll also link that down below. I would really check that out because I go in insane depth on all the automations that we have but we add a tag inside of active campaign that will trigger the automation to remove them from all other automations inside of active campaign. And so that way, as soon as we mark them as curated, they get notified, it uh, updates inside of our CRM. And then also all the automations of sending them text messages and emails and trying to convince them to book the call that also stops. Okay, so our number eight automation actually plays in with the last one. And this one is going to be for my marketers out there. This one is a little bit advanced, but I want to walk you through it because it is totally transform our marketing campaigns. So once somebody is marked as what we call demo curated, so they're not a good fit and we send them that message, what we'll actually do is we'll send a message to our virtual assistant team inside of Slack and say, hey, this person is unqualified for these reasons. Here's their contact details. And this does a few things. Pay very close attention. First of all, it lets the salesperson, the setter, and everyone on the team know that this person is not a good fit for these reasons. So they know why that appointment is no longer on their calendar anymore. But second of all, and more importantly, we have figured out a way in order to only pass back to Facebook, which is where we run a lot of our traffic at Facebook advertising, only the most qualified people. So that means that if we cancel 80% of the appointments on our calendar, and we do what 99% of businesses do when they're running ads, which is they just send all all those people back to Facebook, then we're always going to be curating 80% of people because Facebook's just optimizing for the same event that has been happening every time. The same group of people that 80% are being curated. Hopefully you're following along here. What this allows us to do is we have a certain software where we can stop the sending of that lead back to Facebook before it even happens. So whenever an appointment is booked and they get qualified, our team will go in there and delete or stop that person from being sent back to Facebook. Facebook as saying, Hey, this person is a qualified appointment, or this person is an appointment and let's get more of those. And slowly over time, what we're noticing is that the amount of people that we're curating canceling that are bad fits is becoming lower and lower because we're only sending the most qualified people back to Facebook. So if you started a two times return on ad spend, if you do this over months and years, you can whittle that down to 70%, 60%, 50%, 40%. And when it's at 40%, you have virtually doubled your profitability in your company.
company with no other changes, just using this automation here. Now, this requires a few other softwares, and this is exactly what we help our clients do inside Scaling with Systems. I'm not going to go inside of it here, but that is how powerful this stuff can be. Okay, so for automation number nine, we're going to stay on the theme of marketing. And this one is actually, we use a software inside of our Facebook groups in order to automatically send new Facebook group members to a Google Sheet. And once they're sent to the Google Sheet, what we're going to do is notify our appointment setters as soon as possible and say, hey, here's the new Facebook group member. And because inside of our Facebook groups, we ask them, would you like us to reach out to you and give us your phone number if you would? So if they join the Facebook group and if they give us the phone number, which is what this filter step is right here, then it will send over to our appointment centers and say, hey, a new Facebook group member just joined. Here's their contact details. Pick up the phone and call them right away. And imagine if you are the lead, what your surprise is if you click uh, join group and you submit your information and you say, here's my phone number. And as soon as you hit submit within five minutes, one of our team members picking the phone and calling you and getting to know you a little bit better. How impressive is that, right? And once again, this is all automation and that's exactly what this is here. Whenever a new spreadsheet is added from the Facebook group, it automatically gets uh, sent into the spreadsheet. Only continue if they gave us their phone number and then send this message to our appointment setting team so they can get on the phone, see if they're qualified and get them potentially on a demonstration call. And I save the best for last. Automation number 10, once again, things that we're obsessed with inside this company, feedback, and client success. Two things that I think are making us a better company than anybody else out there. Uh, and so this is another way that we can do feedback. So our ticketing system for support, meaning that whenever somebody emails uh, our support system, support at scalingwithsystems.com, we use something called Zendesk. And I think it's an amazing software. I'm not affiliated with them at the moment. and uh, But I do think they're great and we've used them for multiple years now. And so what Zendesk does is inside of Zendesk, they have an automation where you can turn it on where you can get feedback based on when a ticket is resolved, meaning when something is done, it's like cl they close the ticket that we send the, the prospect, the lead or the person an email and say, hey, it, it seems that this was marked as resolved. How would you rate your satisfaction today? And it's a scale of, I think, one to five stars. And so they can just vote right inside of there and then they can give additional feedback if they'd like. So as you can see, this is a really great way for us to continue to get feedback and make sure every interaction with our company, I always tell my team needs to be, we need to leave the person better than when they first reached out to us. So uh, appointment setting, sales, client success, marketing, uh, support, anything, they always need to leave better than when they first came to us, right? And so this allows us to do this. And so what I set up was inside of Zendesk, I set up the automation so that whenever somebody closes a ticket on our team that says, hey, this ticket is solved, then within an hour, that person gets an email and says, hey, first name, uh, it seems that our team has marked this ticket as solved. We'd love to get your feedback as we're always trying to improve. Please rate us down below how you find the solution to this ticket. And then it's a, it's a rating from one to five. And then they can also put additional information inside of there. And what'll happen is then inside of Zendesk, you can create what is known as a webhook. It's a little bit advanced, but once again, I told you in the beginning, it's a little advanced. You can create something called a webhook, which is essentially uh, like something that's throwing from Zendesk. Imagine that a webhook is like you're throwing something uh, from the original software, so Zendesk, and then you can catch the webhook in Zapier. So I'm throwing from Zendesk and I'm cap. Uh, catching it inside of Zapier. And that allows you to do a lot of cool things that you couldn't natively do inside of Zapier. And the example is this automation here. So whenever somebody leaves us a uh, satisfaction survey, and it is actually, uh, this one specifically is for bad satisfaction surveys, then what we do is we send the information to this webhook from Zendesk, Zapier catches it, and then we send a message to our support team where everybody can see and say, hey, support team, this person said that they had a bad experience with our support tickets. And so then we post the thing inside of there. And then what we'll do is I'll have my head of support pick up the phone or email that person and reach out and try to solve it and figure out why did this person give us a bad rating. And I want to be crystal clear, guys, our Zendesk support rating right now is averaging 94 to 95%. And the only times that people are ever leaving us a negative review, we had one happen last week because this person wanted to apply to work with us. And we said, hey, you have to fill out this application to apply to work with us. And they left us a one-star review, right? That's not even relevant. So we have amazing client satisfaction, but I don't see anybody else talking about this stuff online. And so I just want to give you guys examples of what you can use because you have to accept the bad criticism as well as you accept the good stuff. Or you could just be thinking that everything's 
so amazing when in reality that's not the case as promised if you guys want to get share access to all of these automations in this video plus 20 additional ones that we use inside of our 10 million dollar a year plus company then all you have to do is click the first link in the description down below and you'll get access to them in just two simple clicks let me know your thoughts and i'll see you in the next video in this video, I'm going to walk you through the specific 20 different automations that we use inside my eight figure company in order to simplify workflows, keep a very lean team and honestly stay hilariously profitable. If you stay all the way until the end, I'm going to show you how you can copy and paste these exact automations inside of your business 